happy lunchtime again. It's Friday. Carrie did her hair <laughs> and put some makeup on. I had to do some headshots today, so I unquarantined from the waist up. That's it. And I never, ever do my bangs like this anymore. It's been years. It's been since 2005 since I wore my hair like this. All right. So, um, a lot of times I don't read through these before I go live because I just want it to be um, spontaneous. Um, I did skim through the very first of this paragraph just to see what I was up for today. So, um, I only did the, the first half and not the second half. But um, for this Friday, this this person has a lot of points um, in their paragraph. So, um, it might be a little bit longer one today. So, what this person says is, um, during the presentation given by Mrs. Portell, the impression made on me was the fact of how many people were affected in this crash. So, for those of you that don't know, it wasn't just our vehicle and the impaired driver. It was a four-car pileup. Um, we, like my car had three people and I believe the truck in front of us had three people and then the other two vehicles just had one person each. Um, the other things they, the amount of things that she lost the ability to do because of the injuries. In my mind, the thought of losing the ability to do all of the things I love to do now in my life is terrifying. Her story made me feel very uneasy. A lot of people say that when I give my awareness presentation. Um, I had a lot of sympathy for her. And one question I do have is, does her husband blame himself or feel guilty regarding the collision? And um, what that means is when I give my awareness presentation, I tell the story of how my day went that um, like in, in a uh, chronological order. And it was Christmas vacation. I was coming home. Um, I had just switched back to the healthcare field. I was an x-ray and an MRI tech. And Christmas vacation with four kids can get pretty hectic. And my husband had taken off that entire week of Christmas vacation to spend with our kids. And our crash happened on Wednesday. And I remember he, he called me later in the day while I was at work. And he's like, man, Carrie, I don't know how you do it. He's like... These kids are going crazy. They're driving me crazy. Um, you know, you can only spend so much time uh, in in the same house with your siblings. And I had to go teach a Zumba class that night over in um, a neighboring town in Cuba, Missouri. And I said, you know what? I said, it. I, I will come home. I've only got 10 minutes that I can change and I can grab two of the kids. And um, I'll just take our middle two girls with me. Sometimes they need babysitters at uh, the gym and they can just come with me. And um, what she's referring to is if he hadn't called and said, hey, you know, can you help um, a husband out? Would those kids have been in that car crash with me? Would it have been just me? So um, honestly, that's something we've never talked about. Um, I don't know that we needed to talk about it because... It's just something that families do. Um, Greg very rarely talks about the car crash anymore. Because it's really hard for him to go back to. Um, I have lost a lot of my memories from it. So I have that buffer. Uh, but he does not. He was wide awake, fully aware the entire time from when he got the phone call from my daughter to realizing on his way there that something must be very wrong if I didn't call and Olivia did. And then getting there and seeing um, this is not just a fender bender. So maybe sometime, like, you know, when the time is right, I will ask him about that. But I, I don't know that either one of us has ever thought about 
discussing that, so I really don't know how he, he feels about that part of it. Um, what else she says is, because of my presentation, she wants to make changes in her life from that point on. And she said, um, because of what she saw and heard that day, she will always wear her seatbelt from now on. Um, she says sometimes she does find herself, if she's just going to town, if it's just going to be five minutes, she doesn't wear a seatbelt. Um, and she wants to take care of others more instead of just shaking her head no in response um, to people's comments. Um, and what that means is whenever I talk to teen drivers, I, I tell them that um, they have a choice whenever they see a situation about to go down that they know is not right, they know it's wrong. And I talk about how we all know the difference between right and wrong. It's just that we let our emotions get involved. And when it's people that we care about, friends, it feels very hard to make that right decision because you're going against the grain. And of course, you know, those people are in pairs, so they're going to make a fuss. And, and I talk to them about digging deep down and finding the courage to stand up in that moment because... I know in in many of our lives, there's been situations where, you know, we may have not been right in that situation where we've seen someone across the parking lot get in their vehicle and you have that little thing that goes, you know what, man, I wonder, are they okay to drive? You know, you weren't keeping an eye on them the whole time, but are they okay? And you walk away instead of saying something and that has happened to me one time. I remember when I was in college, coming back home, and I saw that happen. And before I even reached my house, my home phone was ringing, saying there's been a bad car accident, and they're pretty sure so-and-so is not going to make it. And that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, the other thing she says is that, uh, I will make sure that I cherish and being thankful for what I do have. Um, I, I need to be more thankful for what I am already given, like just taking notice of what we have and how lucky we are. And, um, hearing that story that Mrs. Portel laid out in front of us today pushes me to be thankful because, you never know what day could be your last. And you know, I I still get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. Um, and there are some days that I don't live like tomorrow could be my last day. And sometimes I get aggravated with myself that I, I don't do that. But then I'm like, that it's just life. I mean, some days are just busy and you've just got things to do but in the back of my mind now I always am very conscious of whatever I got to do that day regardless of whether I am going 90 to nothing um anyway I am very conscious about but I get to do that now because there was a time there was actually four years when I didn't get to do many of those things. And there was a period of time where, I mean, in an instant, I could not be here anymore. So um, I always have to work around my physical, sorry, internet. Uh, I give myself permission to say, you know what? I'm gonna take an hour and I wanna go fishing. I love to fish, I love it. And I just, because tomorrow I might not get that chance. So I guess the lesson today in um, one is she pointed out, you know, just be more conscientious about yourself and others and your awareness. And then just cherish, just be thankful for what you already have. Because we get caught up in always wanting more. And more doesn't matter if you're dead. It's all gone anyway. So here's Thankful Friday. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Toodles.